If you thought the politicians running our state gave a rat's behind about what we the people had to say about their behavior this legislative session, think again. This is Talk Back and I'm Amber Gunn. It's no secret that taxpayers got hosed during the 2010 legislative session. For that matter, we're still getting hosed as we await the decisions of those higher-ups who believe they know how to spend your money better than you do. But not only are taxpayers getting slapped with a higher bill this session, we were also shoved into a proverbial corner when politicians repeatedly waived public notice for tax bills, held hearings on blank bills, and even eliminated public hearings altogether in some cases. If I didn't know any better, I'd say the state capitol's haunted. Legislators have repeatedly introduced and even held public hearings on bills which are utterly blank, except for the title. These title-only bills are better known as ghost bills for their lack of substance. Many of you may not have ever heard of a ghost bill prior to this year. That's because they're generally frowned upon by open government types, and they really defeat the purpose of holding a public hearing anyway. At the Freedom Foundation, we don't monitor every single bill, but we were able to identify at least seven ghost bills that were introduced this session, most of which received public hearings despite the fact that the public was denied the ability to find out what the bills actually did. One of these ghost bills, in fact, turned out to be the vehicle for the massive $890 million tax package passed by the Senate over the weekend. A public hearing for the bill was waived, and it was passed out of committee before taxpayers knew what hit them. I got robbed by a sweet old lady on a motorized cart. I didn't even see it coming. After it passed the Senate, the House waived all the rules requiring a public hearing and pushed it straight on through to a vote. The catch was they proposed what is known as a striker amendment, which wipes out what the Senate passed and replaces it with what the House prefers. Taxpayers didn't get a say in either the House or Senate version of the bill. And for the most part, we could only watch helplessly as the bill was railroaded through both legislative chambers with hardly a blink from the Democratic majority. But sidelining public involvement in the legislative process didn't start with the introduction of ghost bills. It started when politicians threw out tax advisory votes as part of the suspension of Initiative 960. We understand there are policy disagreements about whether or not taxes are needed to solve the current budget crisis. But there should be no disagreement that the people of this state deserve to know how legislators voted on tax increases. Unfortunately, certain ethically challenged legislators believe that gutting I-960's two-thirds requirement for tax increases didn't go far enough, and to protect their arrears during the November election, they voted to remove I-960's transparency protections and keep taxpayers in the dark about their support of tax hikes. And they want a medal for the tough choices they made this session? Please. Of course, no one can forget the Senate majority's desperate last-minute ploy for an income tax. With less than five hours public notice, legislators held a hearing on an income tax bill whose language wasn't even available until the hearing started. Because that makes a lot of sense. The only details of the bill prior to the start of the hearing were available on Senate Majority Leader Lisa Brown's blog. Have we stepped into the twilight zone? We can all disagree about whether policies proposed by the legislature are good or bad, but this legislature has forgotten who power belongs to in this state. Article 1, Section 1 of our state constitution reads, All political power is inherent in the people, and governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. If legislators really understood that, they wouldn't stomp all over the mechanisms designed to keep the people informed and in charge. It's time that we the people elect representatives who understand that they work for us, not the other way around. The current crop of legislators has behaved as though they are God's gift to the citizens of this state. Memo to them, you're not. Let's send them the message in November. It's your choice. It's your country.